Scripture reading by the evangelist Clarita Nelson. Amen. Amen and amen. I will be reading from Jeremiah 29, um, beginning at verse 11 through 14. Amen. And it reads thus For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, says the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you again unto the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. And the reading of God's word on this morning is blessed. And we certainly thank God for the reading of his word on this morning. Amen. The Bible says he, he gives us an expected end. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for the reading of his word. At this time, we're going to have the ministry of dance by the young men of valor.
God for that ministry of dance. How many that things will get better? And man, the Bible says, don't get weary in well doing. Hallelujah. You should reap if you faint not. Things will get better. It will not always be like this. It's going to get better. Amen. Hallelujah. It will get better. At this time, it is now the time for us to hear the word of God on this morning from the first from our very own. Pastor Shirley Rouse, amen. She's going to come with the word of God. Right before she shall come, the voices of deliverance is going to give us another selection. Thank you, From whence cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord, the Lord who made heaven and earth. He said, He will not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be moved. The Lord that He
bless his name. All of my help come from the Lord. Hallelujah. You, the Bible says, just look to the hills from whence cometh your help, because your help cometh from the Lord. Father, we thank you now. We thank you, God. We thank you for every person that is hearing my voice at this time. Father, we ask Lord, that you give them that blessed assurance that the help come from you. God, we thank you. Now, we thank you for how you have brought us to this hour. We thank you now, Lord, for every soul that is listening to my voice. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray for the healing of our land. Heal our land, God, in the name of Jesus. Touch those who are in authorities. Touch their hearts. Touch their minds. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you in the name of Jesus. God, we want to tell you thank you now. Thank you for your goodness. Oh, God, bless the bereaved families everywhere. Strengthen them, God. Comfort them in the name of Jesus. Those, God, who are suffering from the virus. God, that you will just, just be their healer. Heal their bodies. Those that are in the hospitals, the first responders. God, that you would give them the strength to carry on. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Hallelujah, praise God. We certainly thank God for you on this morning. And that song is ringing down on the inside. My help cometh from the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm looking unto Jesus, hallelujah, the author and the finisher of my faith. I can't look to man. Uh-uh, I can't right now. I can't even look to our government, my God. But Jesus is there to help us. We certainly thank God for you joining us on today. We thank God for all of those who are joining us through face, via Facebook Live and also on the Zoom call. We thank God. I, I continue to say, I thank God that we do. We may not be physically in the building right now, but God has blessed us to have a mechanism to still come together and to worship the Lord. Amen. We're going to go directly into the word of the Lord, Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verse 28 through 31. And I am amazed how the morning scripture and everything with Elder Chris, our presider said, was leading up to this message on today. Matthew chapter 4, verse 28 through 31. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw <clears throat> the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore this thou doubt? And we want to go over to Galatians chapter 6. And verse 9. Hallelujah. And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And let me just read that once again. And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. I just want to talk this morning. I was talking to Evangelist Randall on yesterday, and, and the Lord just blessed that conversation. That she reminded me of something that I had said the night before. Just keep jumping. Just keep jumping. Just keep moving forward. I know many of you have been praying night and day. You've been fasting now for months, yet the problem still remains. But I want to encourage you on today. Keep on praying, keep on fasting, keep on moving forward, and keep on jumping. In the words 
words of my father, the late Superintendent Weatherspoon. He stopped by my house many years ago and he was on his way home and he just stopped by. He had a word from the Lord for me. And he told me, Shirley, keep jumping. If you keep jumping, you're gonna jump out of this predicament, my God. And that's the word of encouragement I want to give the people of God on this morning. Keep jumping, keep moving forward. I don't care how long it takes, glory to God. Because when you find yourself, you're gonna jump on out of it. My God, my God, my God. God is in the process of working things out for you. But what you got to do, you got to keep, be patient and keep on moving forward on, in God. You got to keep, be patient and keep on jumping. You know, that British statement from many years ago, Winston Churchill, and that was back in my childhood, Winston Churchill said, you will never reach your destination if you stop and throw stones at every dog that barks. Let me say that again, hallelujah. You will never, people of God, reach your destination if you stop and throw stones at every dog that bark. In other words, you will never reach your destination if you stop moving forward. You will never reach your destination if you stop jumping, my God. Now, what does the word move mean? Move means to go in a specified direction to change positions, to make progress. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you to keep moving forward, to keep jumping on today. And in our scripture text on today, in Matthew 14, and let me read it again for you. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, Jesus answered, Peter said, come, one word. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried, Lord, save me. And immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou stop? Now, Matthew 14 addresses two miracles. In that 14th chapter of Matthew, it addresses two miracles that Jesus carried out before Jesus, Peter, walked on the water. It was the miracle of the five loaves of bread and the two fish miracle. And then it addresses the story of Jesus walking on the water. Now in the five loaves of bread and two fish, Jesus had, had church meeting, my God. He was healing the sick and raising the dead and there was a throng of people that followed him. And as any good leader would know, Jesus realized these people have been with me all day long, my God, and they were hungry. A good leader looks out for the flock. Not just Jesus didn't just look at his own stomach and said, I'm hungry, give me something to eat. But he said, uh-uh, the people are hungry. Matthew said that Jesus performed the miracle of taking five loaves and two fish to feed an entire crowd of people. Because when he asked the disciples, what do we have to eat? They said, God, we don't have anything except two fish and five loaves of bread. And that's not enough to feed the people. But don't you know, whatever it is, when it's in the hands of Jesus, it is enough. Jesus told him to bring me that five loaves and the two fish and then tell the multitude to sit down on the grass and he took the five loaves and looking up unto heaven and he blessed it and he break it and he gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples gave it to the multitude. And the Bible said in that 20th verse, and they did all eat and were filled. 
I know the skeptics say, how can you feed a throng of people with five loaves of bread and two fish? You can feed it with God bless it. Mm -hmm. We may not have all of everything that we need, but as long as God bless what we have, my God, as long as God bless it, it is enough. And get this, when they took up the fragments, I like that. After they finished feeding the people, after the people ate, they had to clean up after themselves. They didn't walk out and wait for the maid to come and clean up after them. They didn't walk out of the dining room in the fellowship hall at church after eating a scrumptious meal and said, ooh, didn't we enjoy the meal on today? But what did they do? They took up that fragment. Simply means they cleaned up. They didn't litter. They didn't leave their garbage where they were. Come on now, people of God. So that's a lesson for us. We clean up behind ourselves. Hallelujah. And we don't expect others to do it. The disciples cleaned up. They collected the fragments that remained and get this, there were 12 baskets full of fragments. You know, you cannot get 12 baskets of fresh fragments with bread because most time you can eat all the bread and fish with fish bones, my God. But when God bless it, because whatever God bless, it cannot be cursed. Numbers 23 and 20 says, but behold, I have received commandment to bless and he had to bless and I cannot reverse it. I don't care who says what. I don't care who tried to block you. I don't care who's got the dagger in your back. When God blesses it, when God blesses you, it cannot be reversed. I don't care what the enemy is saying right now in your life. When God bless you, glory to God, it cannot and it will not be reversed. And I like this scripture to say, the blessings of the Lord make it rich and he added no sorrow with it. I want the kind of blessing that I don't have to worry about. About. Hallelujah. Let me move on in our text on today. In the 22nd verse of Matthew 14, and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him on the other side while he sent the multitude away. After they finished cleaning up, Jesus said, now I know y'all tired. Get on into the boat and go on the other side. I'm not going with you right now, but you just go on the other side. And then he sent the multitude away and he went up into uh, the mountain to pray. And then they, when the evening come, he, Jesus was there alone in the mountain. Sometimes leaders, we must Get along and pray. We can't have all of the BFFs and, and have the posse with us all the time. Sometimes we got to go into our secret closet and seek God. Hallelujah. We've got to go and seek God for direction for what he will have us to do. So Jesus, Jesus being Jesus, he sent his disciples on. He dispersed the multitude and he went to pray. Because whenever God blesses, it's time to pray. But the ship, now, when he sent his disciples and told them to go on the other side of the ship, but now you see the enemy, the storm waited until they got it into the middle of the sea. When they were tossed with waves because the wind was contrary. Now notice this, the storm the disciples experienced on the sea was not of their own making. Many things that you are going through with right now is not of your own making. Now let us fess up some things we're suffering with because it was our own making. It was our own mistake. It was something that we did. But those disciples at that time, they experienced the storm on the sea, but it was not on their own making. Now why did the storm come? I believe that the storm came because it was they were in compliance with Jesus' command to go over to the other side. Whenever you follow what the Lord say, whenever you are in compliance with what God say, 
but you are in compliance with your leadership, you got, can expect storms to come. Whenever you decide to follow Jesus, storms will come. Whenever you decide it, I'm going to work, I'm going to give my life to the Lord, storms will come. The challenge is, the challenge for all of us is to know this, that in between victories, there will be struggles. In between victories, there will be struggles. In between, the challenge is to realize that in between great Breakthroughs, a battle must be fought. Hallelujah. You can't get the breakthrough until you fight the battle. You go through the battle. The battle indicates breakthrough. Let me say that again. The battle indicates breakthrough. Why, why do you say that? This was used to deliver the people of Israel, but he had to face the battle with Pharaoh, my God, David, 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 yes, he, he had, he became king, but before he can enjoy his kingship, he had to face the battle with Goliath, Nehemiah rebuilding the walls, but before he could rebuild the walls, he had to face opposition, Joseph, 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 my God, was used of God, but before he was used of God, he had to battle his haters, what you are in right now, you're in the battle, glory to God, but I'm telling you that you're at the border of your breakthrough. Hallelujah. But you got to keep moving. You got to keep jumping. In between victory, there will be attacks. In between the breakthrough, there will be battles. There is no triumph. Get this, people of God. There is no triumph without being tried. You want the victory, but you don't want to be tried. Mm -hmm. There is no triumph without being tried. There is no testimony without a test. Hallelujah. How can you have a testimony? You've never been through a test. You've never, you know, stuck a test out. My God. Hallelujah. Because the, the first four letters of testimony is test. Hallelujah. But how many could say I've got a testimony? Hallelujah. I've been through the fire and I've been through the flood. But thank God that I made it. There is no victory without a battle. There is no victory without a battle. But Jesus, there would have been no resurrection if there was a crucifixion. Hallelujah. There would not have been a resurrection if there wasn't a crucifixion. Hallelujah. Our greatest battle comes right before our greatest breakthrough. That, and you've got to know that the darkest time is right before the dawn. The battle rages at its highest right before the victory. If you don't turn back, you will inherit new territory. Don't give up. You're at the border of your breakthrough. Keep on jumping. Hallelujah. Say, so, well, Pastor, my legs are tired. Why? Because it takes an effort to jump. It takes an effort to move forward. Hallelujah. It's not easy. Have you ever exercised and you start feeling the burn in your legs? Hallelujah. But it won't do you no good until you press through the burn. I encourage you people of God to press through the burn. Keep on jumping. Let me get back to my text right now. In the 28th verse of Matthew 14, Peter said, Lord, if it's you. Now, wouldn't you think that Peter would have known if it was Jesus or not? Hallelujah. Tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus answered and Peter and said, come. Peter, his faith. Hallelujah. That bold, audacious Peter. Peter got down out of the boat. He walked on the water and he came towards Jesus. But let me tell you, there's something that happened. Many of you started out, but something has happened. Hallelujah. Many of you start well. Hallelujah. Many of you started the race. Hallelujah. But before you can get to the first handoff, something has happened. Hallelujah. Peter became distracted by the wind and he was afraid. Many of us have been distracted. But when he saw the wind, he became a prayer. He started to sink, hallelujah, but he cried out, Lord, save me. In fact, Lord, help me. Wherever you are right now, you need to say, Lord, help 
me. I'm sinking, God. I need your help. Peter took his eyes off Jesus and he placed them on the storm. He placed them on the wind. Don't become distracted by what's happening around you and to you. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Paul said in Hebrews 12 and 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, he endured his test, despised the shame by God, and now he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. But immediately, immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and he caught Peter. And he said, oh, thou a little faith. Why did you doubt? Why are you doubting God? I don't care what it looked like. Why are you doubting God? Peter had seen the miracles that Christ had already worked. Even earlier in the day, he saw Christ work the miracle with the fish and the five loaves of bread. But whenever you take your eyes off Jesus, the doubt of distraction steps in. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid when Jesus tells you to keep moving. Keep on going. Don't, don't quit. You don't know how you're going to make up. My faith tells me that I'm coming through this. Don't doubt God's faithfulness to you. I like how Lamentations put it in the third chapter of Lamentation. It says, this I recall to mind. Therefore have I hope. Think about what God has already done for you. Think about where he has already brought you from. Think about how he, he brought you out before. Think about Put you in that position and you know you are not. Hallelujah. Therefore, will I recall to mind that will have I hope. And I like the 22nd verse. It is of the Lord's mercies, my God, that we are not consumed because his compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah. And then that 24th verse said, the Lord is my portion, said my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, said my soul. Therefore, will I hope in him? Get your hope out of man and put your hope in God. Hallelujah. The, and then the 25th verse rounds it up and said, the Lord is good unto them that wait for him. That's the key. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, not those that go before him, the soul that seeketh him. When we look at Jabez in First Chronicles, Jabez, Jabez, the name means man of sorrow, man of trouble. But Jabez prayed to God for a change, and his sorrow was turned to joy. He said, oh, that thou would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. Hallelujah. Uh, when we see Hannah, she was a woman who was taunted by her husband's second wife because she had no children. But when she prayed to God, when she passed it, when she put it over to his head, into his hand, she became a, mo a mother. So don't stop jumping. Keep jumping. Keep moving forward. Don't stop. Don't you dare stop because you fear the unknown. When you follow God's will for your life, the enemy will inflict fear in you that you cannot make it. You don't have the know-how to accomplish that. God said, I want to do this for you and I want to do that for you. But fear steps in. My God, Lord, I've lived on the wrong side of the tracks all my life. I don't have the degree. I don't have the connection. I don't have the contact. Hallelujah. And you let stop fear of the unknown stop you from moving forward. And then don't stop. My God, this is for us people of God. Don't stop because of weariness. God is in the process of making things work out for you. Hallelujah. Galatians said, and let us not be weary, and let us not get tired, and let us not throw in a towel in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Know that you got a due season coming. Don't stop because of distraction. 
Don't stop jumping because you're distracted. Don't stop moving forward because of distraction. Some of us, the distraction, we are busy bodies and we are nosy people. Some of us want to stop and see what our neighbor is doing. We want to stop and gossip a little bit about things that don't concern us. The Bible says in Psalms 34 and 13, and Psalms 141 and Proverbs 13, that we need to guard our lips. Woo. We need to be more focused on the things of God and the things that will move our life forward. I, all I can do is pray for you because you can't change anybody. You can't force nobody to change. I don't care if it's your child. All you can do is tell them, pray for them, but you got to keep on moving and keep on being busy for God. Hallelujah. Don't become distracted. Being so distracted, all you have is pity party. Oh me, oh my, why did it turn out like this? Why are my children in this place right here? Hallelujah. But when I look at children, I see men and women of God. Hallelujah. Because I would not be distracted. Why are you praying about it? Woo. Why are you praying about something? Hallelujah. I feel like hollering in here. Why are you continuing to pray about something? And then you let the fear, you let distraction, you let doubt come along and snatch your prayer away. Hallelujah. What are you doing? You, you made one mock when praying, but then fear and distraction came along and it put a negative one there. So where are you now? You are back at zero. Hallelujah. Keep on jumping. Keep on moving forward. The Bible said, if thou fainted in the day of adversity, thy strength is fall. So we need to keep moving forward. <clears throat> we need to keep jumping if we, and, and, and say, well, Pastor, how do I do that? To keep jumping, to keep moving forward, we need to possess violent faith and obedience. Violent faith and obedience. I know we said we got faith, uh-huh, but do we obey? Do we obey? Are we obedient? Are we obedient to the word of God? Hallelujah. Or, are we, or do we obey when it suits? us. Ooh, you may not like me, but that's all right. I love you. To keep moving forward, to be, keep on jumping, you got to be committed and dedicated to the Lord. You got to have a heart of praise and worship. Hallelujah. When it look like things are tough, get you a song. Hallelujah. If you don't know a song, just call, stop singing Jesus. Keep on calling on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And then you got to develop a prayer and a fasting life. Mm. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. We have a due season coming. But the season cannot come unless you keep jumping. Unless you keep moving. Unless you keep plowing the ground. Hallelujah. You got the, the, the field halfway plowed. Haven't even sown the seed yet. And you waiting on a harvest. Hallelujah. You haven't finished your job yet. But I'm coming to tell you on this morning. If you keep moving. If you keep jumping. You're coming out. Hallelujah. You're coming out of that predicament. You're coming out of the valley of Lodabar. You're coming out. I've got my hands up. I'm coming out giving God praise. I'm coming out blessing his name. I'm coming out saying hallelujah. Lord. I thank you. I dare you right now. Hallelujah. You are coming out. It is important for you to know that strength is not born by seeing miracles. We get strength by going through the struggle. You want to see the miracle, but you don't want to go through the struggle. Hallelujah. Your strength comes when you go through. Hallelujah. Strength comes back going through the struggle say well pastor that just doesn't make sense well let me put it this way a bodybuilder doesn't get strength by watching someone else work out but a bodybuilder builds strength by going through the opposition 
of the struggle. Why don't you tell your neighbors that they're with you right now, they're in your living room, wherever you are. Why don't you tell them, neighbor, just press on, glory to God. Neighbor, keep on moving. Neighbor, keep on jumping, cause you're gonna get the strength that you need, hallelujah. The strength that you and I need in order to get into our promise in the struggle. Why? Because it is in the struggle where most people give up. The Bible says, if you don't give up, you will reap a harvest. Woo, glory to God. Uh, my time is up now. But if you don't give up, you will reap a, hobby, ha, a harvest. One person puts it like this. Get happy when you see spiritual, spiritual contention in your life and means that you're on the verge of breakthrough and promotion. God wants us to go from strength to strength, from victory to victory, and from glory to glory. It's all about what we do in between that determines where we go. Because it is the job of the enemy to discourage you between victory to victory. It is the job of the enemy to discourage you between the glory to glory. It is the job of the enemy to discourage you between strength to strength. Hallelujah. The Bible said weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Hallelujah. And I encourage you people of God to keep moving, keep jumping, and keep trusting God. Why? Because you can make it. You can make it. You can make it. Don't give up. Now it's not the time to quit. Don't give up. Now, Father, we thank you for the word of God that has been shared on today. Strengthen your people, God. God, we want to tell you now that we're not giving up. Hallelujah. We're not going to be distracted. We're going to keep on jumping. We're going to keep on moving forward in the name of Jesus. God, we pray now that, Lord Jesus, that you will forgive us. Forgive us, God, for the times that we threw in the towel, for the times that we wanted to throw in the towel, but it was only through grace that we didn't throw it in. We want to tell you, forgive us now, God. Strengthen us, Lord, that we're going to go through our struggle. We're going to go through our test, and we're going through, hallelujah, with good character. We're going through with the praises of God on our lips because we know, God, that you are there in the midst of the storm with us. And we thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God, your saints, we thank God for you joining us on today. Ah, glory to God. If you just keep moving forward, if you just keep jumping, hallelujah, keep on believing. Hallelujah, we thank you for joining us. We thank all of our visitors that have joined us on today. We, we are continuing to pray for you. We want to pray for Mother Mary and the Nelson family and the loss of Mother Mary's brother on this morning. We are praying for bereaved families everywhere. Let's continue to keep our mothers in prayer. We want our mother's board. I want you to know that I love you and I thank you so much for your support. Amen. I had something stop by the house on the other day and just bless my soul real good. And I want you to know from the bottom of my heart that I love you and that I am praying for my agape family. I am praying. I am praying for each and every one of you. I am praying for those who are listening to my voice that may not belong to agape. I want you to know that we love you and that we are praying much for you. Amen. If you agape, this is the time that we're giving of our tithes and our offering to be a blessing to the church. This is your tithing period. Don't do half. Hallelujah. Give up your tithes. Try it with me this year. Try giving what is due the Lord this year and watch God grant every one of your requests. Give. Give. You can give through Cash App. You can dollar sign Agape Deliverance 2020 or through Givelify. This is your tithing period. And now on the tithes, give of your offering. Give according to the way the Lord has blessed you. If he has blessed you with extra, give extra. Hallelujah. Whenever you get anything, you think about the ministry. I need to give this to 
the ministry, amen, so that the ministry can go on. I want you to know that I love each and every one of you, but agape, don't get weary and well-doing. Keep jumping, keep on moving forward. Oh,